Dalvina, Guia Dolosana, Angita Talitakini and Navarong and Bula FM at Golden Point Resort, Basendo Nambando and Ahere, Vinaka. Bula Vinaka and Adam Gotevita, or two and ninety. Anda tali tahu kalau lebaran baru mana bulan fem, nampun tu ane sel. Nada aku macam leh sih, baru keraki ane sih nampun bulan fem nampun tu ane sel. Kalau ngau rakyat kita ni buat apa? Anda tali tahu kalau lebaran mana bulan fem, nampun tu ane sel. Ungu boleh lusi. Bulan fem nampun dua ane sel. This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Tonight, antibiotic misuse becoming a major concern for the country. Israeli non-profit organization here to help Fijians affected by Cyclone Winston and more Fijians to take up employment in Australia. A survey conducted by the Ministry of Health last year has found that there needs to be more awareness on the misuse of antibiotics. Medical professionals are also warning that the continued abuse of these powerful drugs could cost the Fijian government more problems over the next few years. Ellen Stolls is standing by to tell us more. Yes, Jackie, today marks World Consumer Rights Day and the theme is Stop the Misuse of Antibiotics. Now, antibiotics is required to treat severe bacterial infections. However, the misuse of this drug could also lead to the contributing of the rise of bacterial resistance. While it is common knowledge to most people that you shouldn't be sharing your medication or misusing drugs, Health professionals at a press conference today also said that people are ill-informed of the provocations that these antibiotics do and also they need to be more aware about the importance of taking their full course of medication. These same professionals have indicated that if the problem continues, the government could have more costs on their hands. Ministry of Health Chief Pharmacist Apolosi Vosanimbola says if people continue to misuse antibiotics, their body becomes resistant to the drug. The cost implications to the patients or to the government, for example. Uh, we will be buying very expensive uh, antibiotics because all other, gener uh, all other conventional antibiotics are becoming resistant. He adds when more people are sick, this impacts productivity of the workforce in the country, in turn affecting the economy. Dr. John Fatiaki is the president of the Fiji College of General Practitioners. We can't overemphasize the importance of the development of antibiotics. Unfortunately, towards the end of the last century, uh, onto say the last, the beginning of this century, there's been a recognition which has been stressed by a number of our speakers of the development of resistance. Despite this, Fiji is taking steps to ensure that they have a plan to deal with this problem. World Health Organization Team Coordinator Pacific Health Systems, Dr. Kunhi Park, says Fiji is the only country in the Pacific region that has developed a national action plan for the antimicrobial resistant by 2017. This plan requires not only Ministry of Health and Medical Services effort, but also other ministries' support. Because antimicrobial uh, resistance is not only issue of the health sector, but a broad sector such as education, environment, and fishery, and consumers as well. With this year's theme being Stop Misuse of Antibiotics, the Health Ministry is hoping this will settle into the minds of consumers for the betterment of Fiji's future. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. An Israeli non-profit organization is in the country to help rebuild the lives of people in Vuma village on Ovalau Island. Israel is a well-known volunteer group that provides life-saving life disaster relief and long-term support around the world. Akusita Tale met the team and files this report. This are Israel's team of professional medics, water, shelter, agriculture specialists, post-trauma experts and community mobilizers ready to leave for Vuma. The water situation wash um, and to see if uh, Israeli's uh, technologies and uh, specialties can be leveraged in order to assist the situation in short-term recovery and uh, long-term development programs. We we'll try to fix the, the houses that damage uh, but then for the long run we're talking about building in, uh, new houses and this is of course according to the building codes and everything you have here. 
and same time I want to search the area and see the, the opportunity of uh, agriculture projects. The team will put together a plan after assessment to assist more than 100 people on Vuma. To make sure that the children are going to go back to school to any kind of uh, educational uh, frame, which means it's to take out the, 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 the locals from the schools, which now uh, uh, is, is a shelter for them. We have also our psychologists and uh, team members who have their expertise to come and, and assist with the re rebuilding of the emotional state and strengthening of the communities along the way. FBC News visited Vuma last month where 33 out of 37 houses were severely affected. Probably only five houses were you know, uh, standing up after the second one. Uh, some were few were ground, uh, ground zero and a few were partly damaged. Eh? Uh, but uh, uh, we really appreciate Israel government coming in to uh, assist. Once a plan has been finalized, a team of Israeli experts will come in to do the hard work to return the village to normalcy. Akosita Talei, FBC News. More Fijians are expected to take up jobs in Australia under the seasonal workers program despite reports of some workers being paid less than $16 a week. Employment Minister Semi Koroi Lavisau says an investigation into the allegations is now being carried out by the Australian authorities. Maggie Boyle with the story. Last month, Australia... This is a typical problem that we're facing now. Australia is uh, quite new in the seasonal workers program. While New Zealand has been uh, actively being involved in the Pacific Islands in the seasonal worker program, uh, Australia is quite new to it. So uh, while we carry on going forward, they have to adapt and uh, try and analyze the issues that have been raised. Despite this, the number of Fijians going to work in Australia is already on the rise. Total of almost 200 people working uh, in farms in Australia. Initially, we sent 120. We sent another uh, another few lots uh, at the end of last year, at the beginning of this year. We are looking uh, at around about 200 seasonal workers in Australia. We are pushing for between 500 to 1,000 uh, seasonal workers that we, we can send them to Australia uh, as uh, seasonal workers to work on farms. Yesterday, Australia's Foreign Affairs Minister Julie Bishop spoke of the program as a win-win for both countries. I discussed with um, Foreign Minister Kumbumbola the seasonal workers program. Australia has lifted the cap. We're delighted that a number of Fijian workers are taking part in the seasonal workers scheme. And this benefits both countries. Um, Australia seeks um, workers in agriculture, in accommodation, in areas where we can't get local people to take the jobs. And the Fijian people get an opportunity to get work, uh, to send remittances home and hopefully gain some skills. Korla Vassal says the 13 Fijians involved in the incident remain in Australia. They've been placed with another contractor under the program. The minister adds once they receive the investigation report, a team from Fiji will be sent to Australia to assess the situation and make recommendations going forward. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. 28 bridges and crossings around the country need major repairs post-tropical cyclone Winston. Fiji Roads Authority Acting Maintenance Works Manager Aram Go says these works will take more than a year to complete. Ritika Pratap reports. Repairs to cyclone-damaged bridges and crossings is expected to take up to three years and the Fiji Roads Authority needs additional manpower at all levels. We are using technical experts from um, um, countries like New Zealand and Australia, but there are um, bridge engineers within um, our current company and our current consulting firms that we are able to engage. But due to the volume of it, we will definitely be looking at um, outsourcing that. Aram Goes says there will be no immediate repairs in the short term, but commuters will have to use alternative routes where damage has been severe. Well, we've given them all the temporary repairs for access. Um, we are now going through a more structural design assessment and then they will be given all the due design engineering to make sure that when they're repaired, they're repaired um, to a situation that provides future security. The repairs done at the moment are temporary in nature and can 
wash away with a good rain or a good heavy sea. Fiji Roads Authority has also identified 50 kilometers of coastal road on Ovalau Island, Koro, Vanumbalavu and Tavuni, which suffered severe damage due to storm surges during tropical cyclone Winston. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The Education Ministry has confirmed that Term 1 school dates will end on April 29th next month. Education Minister Dr. Mahindra Reddy told FBC News there will only be a week of school break as schools were closed for a week after tropical cyclone Winston hit Fiji. Classes for the second term will resume on May 9th. Still to come on FBC News, cover exporters working hard to get industry back on feet. I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from Bakery Village. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Moses from Valleu. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Marida Manako. I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back, this is FBC News. The cover export market has been hit hard by the impacts of tropical cyclone Winston, which ravaged the country three weeks ago. The Agriculture Ministry is now working around the clock to ensure the export of cover is back on track in the next few months. Sainiani Mboila has more. Agriculture Ministry Permanent Secretary Uraya Wembuta says the cover export market still has a bright future despite being amongst those severely affected by Cyclone Winston. $98.9 million. That was the value of Yango standing crop of Yangona as of December 2015. But the total value of Yangona damaged is around $116 million. And uh, around $293.7 million is the um, amount uh, that was not affected and also can be recovered. He says most cover farmers were forced to harvest young cover plants after tropical cyclone Winston, which resulted in the current decrease in cover prices. People are harvesting the leftover yangona on the ground, trying to get it dried and to be sold. But uh, expect in the, a month's time, we shouldn't be seeing any more yangona coming out. Uh, from these areas. So yes, Yangona price will, dro will drop. Farm gate price for Yangona will drop for the time being because we will be flooding the market. When looking at the, the various damages into the sector, into the agriculture sector, the highest is actually on uh, Yangona or Kava, which is about 58% uh, of the total damage cost for agriculture. Waimbuta says farms in Kandavu, Serua, Namosi, Naitasi, Renteilevu were not affected and will supply cover to local markets. Cover farms in Koro and Taviwuni were fully affected by tropical cyclone Winston and will take time in getting back on track. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. The Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism renewed its partnership with the University of the South Pacific. The Ministry and the University, through its Tourism and Hospitality School, have committed to working together in order to improve the tourism sector. The students have been working closely with the Ministry staff in various aspects, in particular carrying out surveys for cruise tourism. The renewed MOU enables both parties to share necessary information and opens the door for student placements within the tourism sector. The tourism sector has been doing really well. This year has been a good year for us. We've had a little bit of a setback in 2016, but we feel that uh, this will um, not hold the tourism industry back. In fact, the industry has been showing signs of recovery following the cyclone, and the data we have received shows that uh, this year would be also very strong, despite the little setback which is why I think this MOU is very important. The MOU is valid for five years. A post-mortem 
Examination was carried out today on the body of a Class 7 student found at Loloma Beach in Pacific Harbor yesterday. CID Director SSP Kishore Kumar told FBC News that they cannot reveal the details as it will hinder the investigations. The deceased has been identified as a student of Lomiri Primary School in Serua. The 14-year-old girl was reported missing on Sunday by her mother. The New Zealand Defence Force's multi-role vessel, the HMNZ S Canterbury, will continue helping those affected by tropical cyclone Winston. Savara Thambor was on board the ship today as it docked in Suva to reload aid supplies. These are the materials that will be shipped across to Yavata and Wanombalavu tomorrow, which is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of rehabilitation work needed. But down in Vanuapalavu, there's, there's widespread uh, damage to housing and infrastructure. Uh, so our uh, New Zealand Defence Force team have been working hard to get the, the critical uh, community infrastructure back up and running. So our main focus has been on making sure there's food and, and shelter, um, which the, your National Disaster Management Office has actually um, already had in place. So we've just kind of helped top that up. 15 tonnes of construction materials and 9 tonnes of food will be shipped to Yavata and Vonombalabu tomorrow on board the Canterbury. Officer Commanding Engineer Major Chris Wilson says getting the schools open and fixing water facility, also clearing debris, are the priority areas. Gone through and conducted a number of assessments and uh, reconnaissance of those uh, likely tasks and now moving into or have been working through uh, reconstructing the Loma Loma School, getting that ready for opening. Um, working in Malivu uh, with that school as well. Uh, we've opened up a dining facilities, we're looking at um, the ablution blocks and uh, the medical facility in that uh, government cluster of buildings. It has not been easy for the personnel, especially with the changes in the weather pattern. It's a lot hotter here for us um, and also the comms between the beach on the land and with the ship. Um, we do have a bit of issues around that but it's all stuff we can overcome and it's just a challenge that's good training for us as well for when we get back home and do more exercises and then the next time we deploy it's easier for us. A total of 276 New Zealand military personnel are on board and helping their counterparts from the Fiji military forces. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Three men have appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court for allegedly raping a young boy in Thailevu. It's alleged that the offence has happened on several occasions since November 2015 to January this year at a village in Thailevu. The men appeared in the Nasori Magistrates Court on Friday. The lawyer for the three accused has applied for bail on the grounds that the men had no previous convictions. However, due to the serious nature of the charge and because the boy is of tender age, the police prosecutor has moved that the three remain in remand. The court also heard that all the accused are related to the complainant. The case is adjourned until Wednesday when the magistrate will make a ruling on the bail application. Sports Now, here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up, Suva and Nandi football make last minute. That's the finalized team list for FC Champions League. Details after the break. I am Ryan Khan Gurbo Talebuke. जैसे वेस्टिवल एग्रेड है गर्भों में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है गर्भों में एम एलिन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से सहमा ने हमारे वेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर वन है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर वन है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम नेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग Before the Nauru Beni has passed away. News of his death coming as a shock to many in Fiji and abroad. This afternoon, FBC Sports spoke to former teammate Moses Raluni, who shared a few experiences with one of Fiji rugby's greatest sons. Vasanil Prasad reports. Yes, well, I just only just heard this afternoon. It's, uh, you know, as you said, very sad for the rugby community, uh, you know, not just in Fiji, but in uh, New Zealand where he played and uh, England. So, um, you know, it's tough for me, but and the boys, but uh, you know, I really feel sorry for the family. So. Moses Eroluni, who was once the teammate of... But uh, you know, um, probably one of the, the, the greatest moments was uh, you know, playing alongside him in the 2007 World Cup. You know, he was a big part of the team and uh, you know, he was a big part of us being successful. And uh, 
you know, he's going to be sadly missed by a lot of the players. Oh yeah, you know, he was a very fun-loving person. Um, you know, uh, loved to have a laugh with the boys, but uh, on the field it, and uh, on the field, you know, be, be sad. But you know, we'll be glad that he, you know, he's not hitting them anymore. He was a he was a very physical man, and uh, when he played, and you know, he was probably a, a rock in our in our centre. The pools for round seven of the World Rugby Seven Series in Hong Kong have been drawn. Series leaders and defending champs, the Vodafone Fiji 7 side head Pool D, which includes Wales, Canada and Korea. Canada 7's winners New Zealand are in Pool A and will face Samoa, France and Kenya. South Africa awaits Scotland, England and Russia in Pool B, while Australia will meet USA, Argentina and Portugal in Pool C. The Hong Kong 7s will be played from the 8th to the 10th of next month. Vodafone Fiji 7's rep Kichane Talinga's recent resurgence in form has impressed his most devoted fans. FBC Sports visited his family home in Ratambu village in Nandi yesterday, where his father shared his astonishment with his newfound form that has also taken the World Series stage by storm. Talen Dadakadaka has more. Like the rest of the country, Ratambu village in Nandi comes to a standstill whenever the Fiji 7's team plays, not only to cheer on their heroes, but for one of its own, Kitone Talinga, who had an outstanding performance in the recent two tournaments in Las Vegas and Vancouver. Uh, very happy with his performance and he's clearly showing that he's matured and reads the game very well. Talinga had big shoes to fill in the absence of injured playmaker Vatemo Rabobo and he did not disappoint, putting in a scintillating display which earned him the DHL Impact Player of the Tournament Award in Canada. I was very happy about him this time because he didn't put in all his effort in the previous tournaments or show his true potential. But this time, we're happy that he scored the tries. Ratambu is very happy about his performance. A grand reception is expected at the village tomorrow for Talinga when he arrives with the Nestor 7 team from Vancouver. Talent of the Kazaka, NBC Sports. The Ministry of Education has given the approval for the Fiji Secondary Schools Athletics Association to go ahead with the Coca-Cola Games Athletics Meet this year. Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says after thorough discussion with senior staff from the Ministry and the organizers of the competition, the consensus was to proceed with the competition. The Fiji Secondary Schools Athletics Association has welcomed, wo has welcomed word that the Games will go ahead and say they are pleased with the efforts shown by affected schools to take part at the Games. They have been uh, very supportive. Uh, as the minister was going around, uh, the schools have been asking if uh, they could be helped to assist uh, in coming up to the games. Uh, as they've been getting ready. And uh, we have discussed ways in which uh, they could be assisted to get to the games. The Coca Cola Games will be held on the 29th and 30th of April at the NZ Stadium in Suva. Nandi and Suva Football submitted their final team list yesterday for next month's OFC Champions League in New Zealand. But as Rohit Deo found out today, there was a last-minute rush by both teams to draft players into their respective squads. Fiji's representatives to this year's OFC Champions League, Suva and Nandi have had to do with the available players locally as foreign players are not allowed to take part. Scoring his 11th goal. Well, the rule has been there that uh, the team that qualifies must be eligible to play in the competition of that of the country, so our, our uh, league rule uh, is very specific that we do not allow foreign uh, players in, in the national league, and therefore no national no foreign players could be registered for the uh, for the Champions League. Not able to uh, connect. Yeah. The capital city side have secured the services of Rewa midfielder Setereki Hughes, with Nandi duo Samuel Dundru and Ben Aminio Mate Nangara also joining the Whites. Lotokas Kelvin Naidu will also feature for Suva at next month's event. The Jet Setters have signed Antonio Tuivuna from Suva, while Nandronga's Anish Kem has also been drafted in. Well, there has been a bit of tussle between the two, and you would have heard that so many Nindy players had indicated moving to Suva, but uh, I think common sense prevailed, and uh, in the end uh, they withdrew except uh, uh, Ben Aminio, who insisted on coming, on, coming to Suva. The OFC Champions League kicks off on the 8th of April, where Nandi plays Tahiti's A.S. Stefano on the first day, Suva takes on Team Wellington in their first match a day later. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. That is your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now with business.
Fiji is Samsung's biggest market in the Pacific region. This was confirmed by Samsung's head of telecommunications, Stefan Lichi, while launching the new Samsung S7 and Samsung Edge phones in Suva last night. Lichi told FBC News the Korean-based multinational company has been working directly with the Fiji market for the past four years. Lichi adds they're aware of the stiff competition in the Fijian market. For us, so, you know, the Fiji market is really, really important. You know, we're finding lots of uh, Fiji people are buying you know, the Samsung Galaxy S's and the S6's and the Edges. So there's lots of um, high-end phones that the Fiji market is consuming, which is, which is really nice. So you know, with our business growing, um, we're thinking it's becoming more and more uh, popular. And you know, certainly feedback from Vodafone and where uh, they wanted to go there uh, with their business, um, I think you'll see a lot more of Samsung coming in um, to, to Fiji, which is exciting. Isolated afternoon showers was experienced over most places around the country. Nandi was the hottest recording 33 degrees while Atoka hit 32, Suva, Ba and Lambasa won 31, while just like yesterday Savo Savo was the coolest at 30. The forecast to midnight tomorrow for the Fiji group is for some showers about Kandavu, southern Lao group, the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and few thunderstorms. Our look for Thursday, we'll see occasional showers, heavy at times, isolated thunderstorms in some areas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, antibiotics misuse is becoming a major concern for the country, says authorities. Israeli non-profit organization is here to help Fijians affected by Cyclone Winston and more Fijians to take up employment in Australia. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio, Gold station, sister radio station, Gold FM. On to this week's poll question, we are asking you, are you happy with the current BG7's reps? To answer, visit our FPC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us by Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Bye for now. I'm Sarah. I'm from Tawa and I love listening to today to the FM Rock. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Ganyatong. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu. Today FM rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.